Um, so I want to share about this work. Uh, it's called Cultural Graffiti, A Song for Our People's Princess. And you can see I'm here wearing the button blanket that I, I made for our mom in London, England. This takes place in, this event takes place in London, England as well. Um, Cultural Graffiti is a series of 14 um, uh, performative interventions into different sites around London. Uh, and the goal of the work, uh, the goal, one of the goals of the work was to perform indigenous power, specifically uh, Taltan Nation power uh, in this uh, territory uh, called London, England. Because London, England uh, uh, is the main uh, colonizer, colonizing force, one of the main colonizing forces of these territories now known as Canada. Yeah. And when you go into that place called London, England, you walk by buildings, which you can see like beavers carved on them and uh, uh, otters and salmon, right? And you realize, uh, I'm not, you know, it took, it took me a moment, but it, I realized that that the exploitation of these animals paid for those buildings, right? And so that particular place there, it, you know, it, the matrix of it, the matrix that built it, uh, still holds the belief that uh, indigenous people on these territories uh, died out, right? And you meet people there, right? Some people are aware and some people aren't. And, and then you also meet people or you're just in like uh, train stations, for example, because there's a lot of train stations there, right? And I'm riding the escalator down, right? And I turn around and all these um, British lads are dressed up as Indians, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it's something like the imaginary. They really like that territory of, they really promote the idea of the imaginary Indian. They believe in the imaginary Indian, right? And when I, um, previous to this uh, singing uh, culture graffiti at Princess Diana's memorial in Hyde Park, I wore that blanket to declare war on the British monarchy. And um, it's important to know that I wasn't by myself. I was supported by a team of people you know, this is where I learned that it takes a village to make a performance art. It takes a village to make an artwork, you know. And these really great people who are part of the um, uh, indigeneity and the, and the global world project who invited me there uh, to London, um, they overheard things. So we, you know, we did the performance and then they told me after what they overheard, right? And so I'm at, Buckingham Palace and Charlotte overheard, um, I think he thinks he's an Indian. Yeah, right? And then Dylan Robinson, Dylan told me, he overheard, shh, there's an indigenous performance happening. Right? So there's a lot of complexity there, right? Which was all being aimed uh, at my body uh, in that particular performance. Um, the uh, security guards at Buckingham Palace were very happy with my uh, presence there. And so after I had done my work, uh, uh, one of them grabbed me, you know, pulled me aside to interrogate me on what I was doing, right? and. So I was there and part of the team, uh, uh, an incredible human being called Danny Phillipson just kind of showed up. <laughs> and she was able to answer the questions that the, the cop uh, wanted to know. Because uh, I had just done this thing and like my head was in the clouds. Uh, anyway, the guy, you know, we settled each other down and the, the cop says, well, you know, what do you, what do you need now, sir? And I said to him, I need to sing uh, two more songs. And because I had taken my mask off and 
apparently they don't like it when you wear masks at Buckingham Palace, you know. So I took the mask off and, you know, he, he was okay with that. So he gave back to me because I did that for him, right? He said, okay, um, you can go and sing two more songs, uh, but just do it where nobody can see you, right? So I crossed the street uh, to something called Canada Gate, which was a gift to the British monarchy from Canada. And so this, this like atrocious gate, I mean, I know nothing about the history of this. Like it could be very significant, I don't know. I didn't think about it at all, but you know, this like $250,000, $500,000 thing, like very atrocious looking. So I went over there and I, I put my mouth on the gate and performed a cultural graffiti action there. Like I performed indigenous power, Taltan power there, right? And then the very final song was here at Diana's memorial. And I did this, uh, I did this for our mom. Yeah, because she loved Princess Diana. And I mean, I, I, you know, I, this is not for me, like, British monarchy is not for me, you know, but my mom loved her, she loved Diana, so many indigenous elders loved her, so many indigenous elders got up at 4 a.m. to watch the funeral, and absolutely my mom woke me up at 4 a.m. so that I could sit there and watch the funeral with her, right, so I'm singing a love song underneath, into the ground underneath, uh, her memorial, and I left medicine there um, on behalf of our mom and all the indigenous elders who loved this person named uh, Princess Diana. 